onto anything. Amazon, Azure, everything I showed you. More importantly, you can deploy this to your local hardware using what we call MAS, Metal as a Service. The idea there being is that you have a server, it's the MAS server, you rack, rack all your stuff, you tell MAS, these are, this is my new MAS cluster, they will all turn on, they will tell MAS, um, here I am, if you have IPMI, if not, you, you have to tell uh, MAS the MAC addresses. It'll go, that's cool, you're sweet, shut off, chill. They'll all turn on, they'll do their business, they'll all turn off, right? Then you, sit someday, you know, your boss says, oh no, we need WebSphere, um, or we need Hadoop, what do we do? And you type the exact same commands that you would do on your laptop or on Amazon or anywhere. And MAS would be like, hey, Juju said I need a box with eight gigs of, eight cores and 32 gigs of RAM. Which ones do I have? Bam, 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 bam. Machines just start turning on. OS gets provisioned. Everything gets installed. You do nothing but wait. You literally do nothing but wait. Um, nobody believes me, so this is a live demo on a Power 8 machine provided by IBM, which you actually can't buy until June. Um, very interesting platform. This is also the first cycle that we're running on Power 8. So I got to see the cool Google had a board. Do you guys know Google is the world's fifth largest manufacturer of servers? Do you guys know that? No. Yeah. That's how big they are. Um, so they have their motherboard there with two Power 8 processors. Um, all the chips had like black paint because they didn't really want you to see what was going on. But that's okay. Because um, their stuff is very, very paralyzable, right? They're very, very, very highly multi-threaded. So power is really good for that. Um, those machines will be available uh, in June. And anything that runs on x86 runs on power very well, because they switched to Little Indian. But I don't want to tell you about the whole history of power, because it's love, hate, everything. I'll let you one. So nobody believes me that I started this from scratch. So I will just show you. Ganglia. I've got a cool little inspector here. So you can go to each node. Remember to ask for a projector next time, Castro. George, you, uh, you can't, there you go. Yeah, sorry, I'll show you. Yeah, I'm just typing the URL. There's my cluster up and running. You see it's live. There was nothing, nothing there before. This is all live. So, I am now the world's fastest Hadoop deploying expert. Um, the reason we do that is we tell, this is important to note, right? It's all about speed of development, right? It's like the less time that you're sitting around configuring XML files for freaking like dude, right? When you could be getting work done. So like what I tell people now, dude, if it takes you longer than 10 minutes to set up a dupe, you're wasting your company's money, man. Just, I got, I got your back, man. It's good, it's good. And I, we just hired a new guy who's going to be making um, not only the Hadoop charms better, that's what Juju runs. Um, but he's actually going to be making a suite of MapReduce jobs and things that are common for people so that you can just say, hey, dude, I want this. And then when your cloud provider angers you or a competing cloud provider lowers the cost, right, you can just move your workload, right? The great thing about cloud providers now with competition is they're all out, out racing themselves to lower prices, which is really good. Um, that's, that's what competition is good for us. So. Juju.ubuntu.com, it's great. It's been, I've been working on it for two years. It's really good. It's really scalable. Uh, we started our test at 2,000 nodes. It's written in Go. It's a very concurrent language. We're like big fans of it now. Um, so it's really good. All free. You get this all for free. Um, any questions about server? Okay, client. Sorry, I went five minutes over on server. But that's okay, because I'm the server guy. You owe me. No. Um, <laughs> All right, so for the desktop for 14.04, package updates, those are the obvious things. Uh, the big one now is actually not Ubuntu related, is finally the new Firefox UI has landed with Australasis or whatever they call it. So it's very slick, very Chrome looking. Uh, and that's already been pushed up into 14.04. Uh, so there's been a lot of improvements there. Um, as far as Unity itself, we now do my favorite feature. 
What? <laughs> How many of you Unity haters in here? All right. Now it's on. All right. <laughs> <laughs> don't want on, on any of my systems. And like, halfway like, through, no one's even mentioned me yet. Come on, man. Yeah. 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 All right. So, <laughs> my coolest feature is talking to servers. Talk to servers as long as you can. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So, do, do you guys know the spread? You hit Super W to the spread, the little yeah. thing. You can now do keyboard searching in here. So, you Super W said, I wanted to go to Chrome. <laughs> yeah. Hey man, it's just it's finally getting good. Time to rewrite. Um, and we have also really really stupid things that no platform should be embarrassed to do. So we now do anti-alias corners. That's right. Right <laughs> before has left the building. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else do we have? Let me see. Um, you now can actually individually turn off the online sources in the dash for those of you that use that. So you can say. Oh, I didn't want you to search my Google Drive, but I was searching for porn. Search here instead. <laughs> um, let's see, what else? Hmm. Those are really the, the, uh, the spread type I had find was a big deal for me. Um, this, is, this was not our fault, but everyone blames us for it. It's the venues I thought was interesting. Oh, that's, yes. That's the other big one. Um, we had to roll back the Nautilus to an older version so that you can do type ahead find now in the Nautilus. So that's a nice feature to get back that was removed for no reason. Um, and then the, this is a big one. How many people not a fan of a global menu? That Mac thing that always disappears and you all hate me. Right. So now there's an option and I'll show you where. Sorry. Sorry, hard, hard to demo a desktop thing with like no, no projector. So. If you go into your appearance thing, because you're using the dash, so just hit super and type appearance. Um, there's an option here that says show the menus for a window in the Windows title bar instead of the top. So it's nice because we get to keep the space that we save by not having app specific menus. So what happens now, okay, this is no, not maximized, oh, is the menu is actually in the window. Interesting. So you can do this. It's very, very cool. I'm really sad it's not the default. But what's also cool here is the guy who wrote it made it smart enough, so if you click and hold, you can still drag the window. The threshold is really nice. Yeah, it's really sweet. And then, of course, when you maximize, you still get that. Now, or you're like me, you don't use menus. How many of you have used the HUD before? All right, so you just say, why would I even have menus when I can just... George Kixi. Sorry. You hit the Alt key. What we actually do is we... Um, usually people run into this by accident. Oh, what the hell is this? Um, so all of your menus, we index those. So you type, you just hit Alt and type Print. You don't have to go figure file print. This is really good for the GIMP, right? Where you're yeah. like, where's Blur? No, it's in plugins. It's and then you're nesting a menu, and then you move your mouse, and the whole thing goes away. You're like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alt, Blur, Enter, done. OK, so that's the HUD. The HUD is my favorite Unity feature. Um, the dash, not so much. Very slow. I also noticed that I will tend to have at least a few KDE apps. Uh -huh. that all of a sudden, the KDE all buttons for Minimize, maximize on the right. Uh -huh. It's like, wait a minute, I'm in Unity. How did this happen? Mm -hmm. uh, that just showed up with 1404, I think. Oh, okay. I don't know why that is. But we should figure because it out. Because I think that's the native thing for the app. Oh, okay. It's a KDE app. Okay. All right. In Unity, I like the fact that you finally made it that you can shrink the launcher icons down. Yeah, to oh, that's the last big feature. Thank you, I forgot. So, how many of you have like high resolution displays? You have like your Macs or whatever. How many of you got a 4K display? <laughs> <laughs> I need, need Trevor Wood. Right. So I got a coworker. He's like, he just started mailing us stuff. Like the guy working on the GUI for the Juju, right? I was like, hey, I found a bug with the layout or whatever. He's like, here, I fix it. What do you think? And he's sending the screenshot. It was like, <laughs> like, and I had multiple monitors. And I'm like horizontally scrolling. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> and he's like, ah, I got a 4K monitor. You need to buy this right away, and I said, okay. So I will. Um, so the problem with 4K monitors is, thanks a lot, HDTV, everyone thought that 1080p was good enough. So resolutions used to keep going up, right? And then everyone said, oh, 1080p, I guess that's good enough, right? That's why you still go places, and they have huge panels under 1080p. That sucks. Um, and then Retina's displays came out, and everyone's like, wow, that's actually a good idea. So what you can do here is in the look, now this obviously you can't tell because I am not on a high resolution display. I mean, why, why are you? 
You know, it's good. this thing pad is 1366 by 768. I have a tablet with more resolution than this. I don't know what the PC industry is doing. I that. So right down here, you have the scale button. And this will scale the entire UI. Yeah. I use 24 inserts. Oh, that's pretty good. Now, some apps don't react to this well, but LibreOffice as shipped at 1404 does have preliminary support for this. So we call the feature high die, high display. That's what we say. So this is the first version of Unity to do this. This is also the last version of Unity 7, that thing that I poured blood, sweat, and tears into. Um, and the next one's going to be totally uh, redone and cute. That session is available in the archive, so you can install Unity 8, that's what it's called. Then you'll log in, and it looks like a tablet, because we haven't actually started making the desktop version. So the idea there is called Convergence. I'm sure you guys have seen Mark talking about it over and over again. The idea is... Okay, the idea is same code base, but you adapt your display based on what, what you're connected to, right? So if you're at a desktop and you launch an app, you get the app version of that, the desktop version of that app with tabs, right, or whatever, right? And then you go to a tablet or whatever, it's smart enough to figure out, I'm on the phone, therefore I should display the touch-friendly UI. The idea there, though, is to have the same code base with an SDK, across everything. And there are a lot of really, really great apps coming to the phone, and once the desktop stuff gets finished, you'll automatically get all these new apps uh, for the desktop. So something that's very exciting, the whole idea about uh, situations like this. If I'm going to a conference, I would much rather present my slides anyway from a device that I could just plug in and it's smart enough to realize, oh, you're on a bigger screen, and then I just grab my little wireless and I get my desktop interface on my phone. So that is that is the deal with convergence. A lot of this stuff will be happening over the next year. Um, that's why this LTS is like, um, unless you're really interested in doing that stuff, um, Unity 7 is actually really good. And I said that for real this time. Uh, <laughs> the 704, it was buggy. 11.04. So wait, 7 is good now that it's just going to be replaced with a brand new code base. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we hire people. Uh, yeah, before, it's like the one guy, it's like the Compaze guy. He, he hadn't even finished college. Like, he could only work on a half time. Same time. Um, so yeah, I mean, and, and you know, let's be honest, Compaze over the years has not well, let's just not go there. Uh, so let's, let's just say that uh, with Qt5, we really get a lot of nice things. Um, it enables developers to do uh, really fast iteration. GoQML is a thing that we're into now. That's writing QML apps with Go on the back end. Um, so that's really nice. And as you can tell, it's obvious, right, when you use the desktop, right? It's like, huh, feels like the guy who wrote this shell is not the same guy that wrote the file manager application, right? So when GNOME wants to go do whatever GNOME wants to do, and then we want to do what we feel you know, our users want, right? you see that, right? That's why you see things like buttons in the wrong place. Um, and that was okay in the 90s, but not today, not in 2014, right? Everyone makes fun of Windows 8.1, right? But it's four default settings away for not being a bad operating system. <laughs> default set. I counted. I was like, I'm going to see what this thing's about. And I was like, holy shit! And then I found the settings to make it like, be okay. And I was like, man, it's a good thing they didn't ship that. I'd be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's where it is. So, um, I mean, the, they had the right idea, right? They just kind of did it all wrong. <laughs> like the idea that, you know, think about it. Uh, like I haven't had a, like a relative or anyone I know that's like, come with me to Best Buy, we're going to buy a PC, right? They're always like, yeah, when I got a tablet, right? And they have tablets everywhere and phones like that. So the idea of having the same, your stuff on different screens is totally, totally awesome. Um, but you can't, you have to design for those screens at a, at a, at a certain way. That's why people are like, I don't like Unity, it's designed for tablets. No, it's not. It's the most keyboard driven desktop out there and that's why I love it. Um, so, but yes, I understand that people get upset about that. But that is the future. Change is hard, I know. But you guys are Linux people. I know you're smart. You can handle it. Um, except, except KDE. There's always KDE guy. So <laughs> there's always one or two KDE people. Any tiling winner, 
tally window manager fans here? Good. It smelled weird if it did. I'm not telling you, man. I'm just kidding, man. I'm running KDE on three machines. Uh -huh. I'm running KDE on three machines. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, we got what? Five minutes left. Yeah. Five. Questions, comments, anything that you want to just tell me, like your experience or something bad happened, something good happened. The thing about the desktop going to a rolling release eventually is that on the roadmap anywhere? Uh, so we have a rolling release called the development release. Um. It does pause and slow down twice a year to make a release. Currently, there are no plans to do that. However, 99.999% of users' concerns will be solved when we have click packages with Unity 8, which means we decouple the OS from application releases. And then it will be like how you expect. I want the new version of that thing that that guy has, but I don't want to upgrade my entire OS. That's okay. Basically, yeah, just like Android. That so, and that takes a while, right? Because to do that, you have to have an SDK. You have to have something like Mir because X is, right, because you have to have sandboxing for the apps, right? If they're upgrading, right, right now everyone, every Ubuntu developer has root on your machine, right? That's why we're so slow. You gotta check everything, right? And it's like, oh, I, I got backport and do all this stuff, Debian packaging is hard. Click packages are just zip files and it's self service for the app developer. They just say, new version, they go to apps.ubuntu.com, they upload their thing, and in two minutes everyone has it. We have that on the phone right now. And 14.10 is the cycle that will bring that back. So yes, that will solve that. If not, uh, just run the double release. Uh, these days everything is automated through package testing, so the chances are when you upgrade it blows up in your face, or not that bad. Um, I'm always on the development release. So this time for an LTS is special, so I like to stick to stable as long as I can. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, that way someone's like, check out this new app. It's like, oh. Uh, well, it's all the problem sometimes having to add a special PPA just to get yeah. an updated version of that because it's not in my Yeah, and then you upgrade and then that PP 404. Right. So. Yeah. Thanks, dude. You know, Launchpad automatically will build for the next release. Just no, no developers turn it on. It's like, dude, can you make your user do that? That sucks. <laughs> so, uh, I've got time for one or two more questions. Yes. Um, there is a. Um, Program called SSSD, or by the Firebase project, and um, it lets you integrate nicely into the Active Directory. And in 14.04, it finally works perfectly. Thank yes. you so much. Oh, awesome. <laughs> That's actually a funny story because in 12.04 we shipped Centrify, and then they kind of went all scummy. Um, but that's okay. And a whole bunch of that stuff uh, went into Samba anyway, and things like SSSD. Who sponsors us? Is that Red Hat? Uh, Thank yeah. them. Yeah. I don't know. We just sent it from Debian, probably. So. Good, good that it works for you. So in Oakland, that's what I did. I like, I had uh, Linux servers uh, with Active Directory because it's nice. Students could just SSH and they got the Kerberos ticket. It's sweet, sweet. Good job. Yes. I will give you the inevitable mirror question. Okay. Because someone had to. Okay. So uh, that is scheduled to show up. I think fourteen ten. So it's in fourteen oh four today. You can install it. Okay. And then, like nothing works with it. Yay. Yeah. Uh, so. The, the hard thing about Mir is getting legacy apps to be able to display properly. Mm -hmm. So we tried to do this thing called XMir, and nobody liked it. Like Intel really didn't like it, right? Mm -hmm. um, I noticed. Yeah. Because, yeah, there was performance issues there. Uh, so what we're going to try to do is instead of doing like XMir as a whole session, what will happen is your display will run Mir, and all the cute <coughs> GTK apps, all the major toolkits will just work. Um, you will not notice a difference. That's the whole point. Um, and then for like your older, I don't know, Tickle TK app or something or whatever, what will happen is it will launch an X mirror uh, standalone just for that app and it'll be rootless. So it's actually an X window on, on your thing. So that'll be nice. So your network, network apps and stuff will just be rootless. So, um, and if you don't like mirror and you hate me, uh, Wayland's of course in the archive somewhere. So. When your app get installed KDE, you'll have 102 extra packages to install instead of 100. So the idea there is for you to use what you want. Mm -hmm. um, we feel that the display play, display server is really not important now. I know some people disagree with that, but, uh, but that's okay. That's fine. So any other questions? One more. So Ubuntu, you know, we've got a lot of. Uh, a lot of deployments, a lot of niches, a lot of things going on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Windows is still embedded in a lot of big companies and stuff. Do you see uh, Ubuntu pushing into more stuff? Or are so, you pretty much where you are? And so I don't, you know, let's be realistic here, right? If the Linux desktop thing was going to happen, it, it would have happened already, right? So I think for certain use cases, that will still be the case. 
I think what will happen is is traditional IT and kind of cubicle style stuff will always be there. I think on the back end in the server room though, that will all be Linux. That will all be Ubuntu server. And that's exactly what we're seeing in places like banks and there was a bank father bug, you know. The OpenStack interface doesn't work in IE8. That was like, oh, we've arrived. They can't update the browser. Yeah. I was like, mm -hmm. What? So, yeah. yeah. I'm proud to be saying that I'm building a Ubuntu desktop image for my yes. developer centric job. That is a man. And right it automatically there. joins the domain and sets up Kerberos delegation for Chrome and Firefox. We were having beers later. That's exactly what I did at Open. <laughs> Anybody has something that they totally hate that they like? Want to tell Mark so I can tell him or something. So much more guys. That's okay. Oh, the default ad, uh, like searching Amazon and then you bar. So the default, hey, check it out. You type privacy and turn it off. I know they removed it, but. Yeah, we didn't really remove it. We just what? actually added more commercial things. On it. But there's also this. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's, I want to talk about this real quick because I know privacy is a concern for people in the Snowden era. That's like the thing everyone's saying, right? Yeah. <laughs> Snowden era. Um, so the dash is designed to be a search engine. So when you when you type stuff into it, it returns results, right? The problem was is that the first one we did was Amazon, right? When we were actually working on really cool ones like Wikipedia, GitHub, like. In the dash, you can type code colon, the name of your favorite GitHub projects. Then it's like the greatest tool of all time, yeah. right? But people focus on like the Amazon thing and they think that you know it's well, really all about Amazon. I want Libre Kelp, not a calculator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not so, Amazon looks Right, right. So the yeah, so the app the dash is actually smart. If you type calc, you pick calculator and you pick that two times. So from then on, calc will do that. But yes, uh, very easy to turn off privacy. Um, I turned it off for other reasons, performance. I, I feel like we kind of could really do a better job there. Um, I think the idea is sound. Like I said, you know, the idea is sound, implementation, not so much. On Unity 8 on the phone, it's really great. Though. So that will be coming to the desktop, and then finally people will stop claiming me about it. <laughs> Real quick time. Real quick one. Uh, we have the 1404 release party oh. tonight, 8 o'clock. We have discs. For 1404, Ooh. came in the mail this week. Oh, what, I don't even know what they look like. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> where, where is that going to be? It's going to be down at the bar, 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock. So okay. come on down. I will, I'll have all my stuff on me, so if you actually want to see, if you didn't believe that I actually deployed all this stuff, I'll have that at the bar. Sorry we didn't have a projector, uh, but that's okay. Everyone learned something. We have a good time. Yeah. All right. yeah. <laughs>